All right, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah. How are you all doing today? You know, it's the second day after lunch and sessions in the middle of the conference. And so I just want to make sure that you all are uh, awake and listen, ready to listen. Today, I will be talking about building intelligent apps with ML.NET and Windows Machine Learning. My name is Ron Dagdag. I am a Microsoft MVP uh, with AI and Windows development. Um, and let's get started. All right, this is exciting. Who among here knows about machine learning or have played with machine learning? Have, okay, that's quite a few. Uh, any C-sharp devs around? Anyone that played with C Sharp and machine learning? You? Oh, a little bit. Oh, so we got a few people. Any Windows developers? Windows app developers, desktop developers? You know, it's becoming a unicorn because a lot of it is mobile, but there's still a use case for Windows app development. Anyone knows about the Windows key? Anyone uses Windows? And you, know, you remember that key right there that looks like a window? That is the Windows key. <laughs> okay, just want to make sure. Uh, so I'm going to kind of mix my talk between Windows Key and Windows Machine Learning. The reason why I kind of look at it and I title it this way, because typically, you know, a lot of people see that there's a Windows Key, but doesn't know when to use it, where to use it. The same way as Windows Machine Learning, when to use it, when to use it. And there's the, uh, Either way, you're going to learn something new, even if you're not familiar with machine learning, you're going to learn more about the Windows key, so it's not a waste of your time. <laughs> okay, and does anyone know that Windows key control, shift, alt, opens, office, and OneDrive, and all these different shortcuts? There's, it feels like playing the piano going through all these different combinations, but if you want to use, to open up Word, you use Windows control, shift, alt, W and it would open up Word. Is it a shortcut? Yeah, it's, is it useful? I don't, I don't know, but I just want to say it feels like playing the piano using the shortcut keys. Okay, today I'll, I'll talk about more about the machine learning. What is machine learning? A little bit about what is this community toolkit, uh, which helps developers uh, to build this intelligent API. A uh, little bit about Open Neural Network Exchange and Onyx Runtime, uh, ML.NET, if, if you know Visual Studio, and have worked with uh, ML.NET Model Builder, and then uh, Windows Machine Learning, and in between that, lots of demos, uh, just to get you started. Of course, a lot of us here are developers. Uh, typically, when devel we're developing a software, like in this case, we're building a calculator, we need two things. We need input and then the algorithm, you know, how to do the add, subtract, multiplication, or division. And then, of course, we spit out the answers, right? So this is, the, at the end of the day, that's the simplest thing, what, what we're trying to do. You have the input and whatever algorithm you built, and then it will give you the answers and after you do the processing. In machine learning world, it's like the other way around. It's flipped. You need input, and you got to also give it a bunch of answers, the goal is to teach the computer based from this input and answers to build an algorithm for you. So once you see this and kind of realize that's what it's doing, and there's a reason why you need a lot of data set, a lot of examples of input and answers and that combination so that it can know and find the pattern and build that algorithm. So for example, you have, you know, one plus one, one plus yeah, equals two, and all these different examples, you can, you can train a machine to kind of learn what that formula is or what this addition. And that's the whole goal of machine learning. So as a machine learning primer, programming on the right side where you have the algorithm, input, and then answers on the left side, which is the machine learning, which answers, input, and then algorithm. In machine learning world, we call that training data. When you hear about you know, data scientists, your team, or we're wanting to learn more about machine learning, they'll ask you, 
or is your training data? They start with that. And of course, a lot of it is data cleaning. Right? Correct input and correct answers the, is the best way to, to make sure that the algorithm that gets generated is correct, is, is valid. And then, of course, you would use training framework, machine learning tra training framework, in order to build a model for you. And then when you start hearing you know, machine learning models or, or neural network models, all those things, that's what it means. That's the output of your training framework. And of course now, since we have that model generated, we can use that for the algorithm that we have. In machine learning world, that's what we call inferencing. So once we start integrating it with our application, that's, uh, that's you know, your business application, that's when you have the inferencing. And you, in order to use that model into your application, you use an inferencing runtime. And so that kind of gives you as a loop. Today, I will be focusing on the inferencing side of machine learning. Um, so I'll be focusing on this, that, that side, right there, the inferencing side, where we would use the runtime, we would create the model. A lot of examples out there when you wanna learn about machine learning, they all start with the left side, right? And for us, software engineer, I'm a software engineer by, you know, by trade, the way I kinda of think about it, first, when I wanna learn about something, is like how does it apply in real world? How does it apply to my application that I'm building? And that's where it is. It's on that right side. That's the inferencing side. So we'll start from there, um, and we'll focus on that. And we'll focus it on the Windows side. How do we incorporate that in our Windows application? The session after this, I just want to invite you, if you want to integrate the same thing for JavaScript, uh, stay in the same uh, location, we'll have it on, on our next session. All right, so first things first, the intelligent API, this is an example of how easy it is to add machine learning, it makes it easier for devs, does not require machine learning expertise. If you just wanna start on experimenting on this machine learning and not know about a model, right? Uh, and what it, this one, Intelligent API, it creates a new, uh, it reuses existing machine lo learning models that is out there. It's just a NuGet package if you're a C-sharp developer. Uh, it's inferencing uh, on machine learning on Windows, and it, it uses uh, Windows ML. In order to use this, uh, there's a NuGet package. Anyone uses NuGet packages in, in Visual Studio or have used it? There, there, there's a way you can customize it and with a different NuGet source. Uh, so if you want to use a different feed, because this is still experimental and still on the community toolkit. So you can add that, uh, and then you can have these NuGet packages that are available, image classification, object detection, and then emotion, emotion recognition. Um, of course, you can do image classification. That's what I'm gonna uh, kind of showcase real quick. So this is just a quick demo on what this one looks like. Um, see if I can share my screen. Um, the Visual Studio Intelligent API. So I'm using Universal Windows Platform on this. It's just uh, the, the simplest way I can find that can do machine uh, do this machine learning work. So in order to do the NuGet package, you would go to Package Manager settings. Under NuGet Package Manager, there's package sources. And now I added, typically it's NuGet.org. I'm adding this WCT Labs. I don't know if you all can see that. It's harder to, to kind of see. And I, I have that uh, package added in. And once I have that in this project, and these are all on my GitHub, and I'll send the link if you want to experiment on it. My goal here is to kind of give you uh, uh, kind of a background on how to integrate it with an existing, with an, with an application. So on this case, we're, we're using this community toolkit labs, that intelligent, that image classification. If you're not familiar with image classification, you have image and then it tries to identify what kind of image it is uh, based from uh, you know, using this model that is existing out there. 
So once I use that, I have this application that I'm doing, uh, that I have. Let me, let me change the size of the screen. And let me try to run it and kind of give you a feel for what it's, what it's doing, and then we'll walk through the important parts of the code. You can always experiment on this uh, in your spare time. You need to. And feel free to ask, ask any questions uh, and stop me at. So let's, this is something that is familiar with us. I'll open that one. And since it does image classification, it tries to guess based from the model that I downloaded off the internet. It's seashore, coast, sea coast, and with the confidence of that. That's, that's what it's trying to do. It's, it's machine learning based from that image. It analyzed and it gave me a guess. It's trying to guess, right? Of it's either one of these three, okay? So what, how I did that, the important part of this code is, you know, it was able to pick an image, okay? I was able to pick an image and then using this SqueezeNet image classifier dot classify image, you just pass in the image that you're, you're, uh, you're sending it to, you know, just like any uh, async await call or uh, a method call, it'll give you the list of the result, and that's pretty much it. The, the simplest way is what I'm trying to showcase is if you just want to try out uh, image classification, this is a good way of kind of understanding the, the process. There's a file, there's an input. It was trained already with certain outputs, and you're trying to use this and pass the uh, and pass this as uh, as a classifier, and it'll give you the result. And then, based on that result, then you can do whatever you need to. Okay? Yes, sir. So this is all on processes that are going on, and what's the requirements like? In terms of the processing side of things, I mean, it's running in CPU. So it's, it's, and the model is actually downloaded on that device. It's not being sent to the cloud. It's just running here locally. It's part of the project. And that's what it's doing here whenever it tries to load it. It's part of that library that I'm using. So, the, so if you just want some image classification, some of this predetermined one, that's one way you can, you can start with this. All right, let's go back to Windows key. <laughs> Windows key. Uh, you can windows up, down, left, right. You can mi minimize, activate window. And there's a window shift to, to do from one window to the other. Let's see if that one works for me. Okay, so windows key, left, right, up, down. You know, if you just want to move it on the left side or want to move it to the right side, there's the way you can do that. Okay, I know it's... Okay, so that it feels like it's, you're swiping left and right, and that's the reason why I have that one. Auto ML. Uh, Auto ML with ML.net. Anyone here have heard of ML.net? Okay, a few people. ML.net, machine learning for .net. Or C, specifically C Sharp, because they have a lot of examples there in C Sharp. Auto ML uh, helps us accelerates this productivity. Like in this case, here's an example. We have a, you know, how much does it cost? You know, we're trying to guess, right? A taxi fare for one passenger going to airport to downtown. So we have a lot of data and we want to train a model based from these and, and try to, to guess how much is that going to uh, cost, right, for taxi fare. So typically, if you have a data scientist, you know, this is on the, the, the training side, um, there's a few things that they had to do, right? You need your input. And one of your input is distance, trip time, car type, passenger. That's your input. And then, of course, your output is your cost. So a bunch of examples of what of these features. Right? Think about it as your, you know, data in your table, and then you're trying to guess the output. And then now, uh, it's not just features. You also have to figure out which algorithms you're going to use, right? So. In this case, what, it's, what the what AutoML is going to do is it's going to select automatically which one of, based from these uh, features, which one is, 
is it, is it worth using? It's going to pick the right algorithm, right? And of course, there's a different machine learning algorithm that is out there to, you know, to train uh, a model. And then each one of those models have their own parameters. You know, think about it, you call a function, you pass in parameters to it. Each one of these algorithms have their own parameters. And then, of course, it would create the model for you. And then it would iterate, it would try different features, and then it would create another model for you. And it would continuously do that until it finds a model that works well with your testing data. In order to, to validate it, you also are testing in between, right? You, you, you try to, based from this model, how effective is this? And it will give you the, those values based from your data set. And then ML.net, uh, AutoML, it does that in parallel, all running at the same time, uh, based from your input, and then it would spit out uh, and give you an optimized model. So this reduces the amount of, not necessarily guesswork, but it, you know, a lot of things that we have to remember in order to generate uh, a custom model. So think about this in the diagram that I was showing you. This is on the left side where you're doing a machine learning framework. ML.NET is a machine learning framework, and it is, um, it is using AutoML to generate a model for you. It also accelerates model development because it has a way you can do model explainability, meaning based from this model, the, the feature importance is this. So in this case, we're trying to guess uh, distance would be very useful for model A1, uh, as in very important as compared to model B, which is trip time. All right, let's go back to Windows key, because I know <laughs> just sw switch a little bit. Of course, you all know that the Windows key have the start menu, right? <laughs> Windows key D is uh, chose and hides the des desktop. Uh, of course, I use Windows L if you just want to lock your, your device, Windows L, lock it, unlock it, and Windows M minimize and all that. So Something useful you might be able to use every day. All right. Let's continue on. So typically, you know, I did talk about machine learning framework. I did talk about ML.NET. A lot of data scientists out there, they may be familiar with PyTorch, right? Or may, may be familiar with Python and would generate models in Python. And then, of course, you know, they typically run it on their machine and build the model. Of course, you know, if you're a JavaScript developer and there's lots of JavaScript frameworks out there, sure enough, if you're an AI developer also into machine learning, there's a lot of machine learning frameworks that is available out there. And knowing which one is which and which one to use, you know, it, it depends uh, on, on the, each one of those have advantages and disadvantages. And of course, nowadays, whenever we create, you know, we, we create an application, of course, we're not just running it on CPU. Sometimes we would run it using GPU or run it on different chipset. Maybe we would deploy it on our phone, maybe deploy it in the cloud, not necessarily on the desktop. And so that's what Onyx is, uh, Open Neural Network Exchange. And that's what it does. It's kind of like a PDF. Onyx is a model you convert it into. So that's one type of model. Um, and that's what will give you more examples on when to use Onyx model. So when, to, when would you use on Onyx model? When you have something that's trained in Python, but now I have my Windows app and I want to integrate machine learning into my Windows app, you can use Onyx. You convert whatever the data scientist or uh, you know, what, when you create these models, you can convert it to Onyx. And then you can integrate Onyx into your C Sharp, Java, and JavaScript application. Uh, when you have something that you need for uh, high inferencing latency, uh, you need, really need it fast, uh, Onyx would be a, a good tool for you. So think about it as PDF, right? When we create a, you know, write something in the Word document, we convert it to PDF, 
Now you can have it viewed in different places, in different location, right? You can view it on the phone. You can view a PDF in the, in the browser. Kind of like the same way, it makes uh, uh, the model interoperable and work on not just on IoT devices, different OS, different hardware, and different frameworks. So you would use that, in this case, Onyx Runtime, which is actually on GitHub. Uh, it's open source. And if you want to integrate, in this case, we're doing a Windows device uh, in C Sharp, and we're just going to use CPU. It kind of gives you an example right here. If you go to onyxruntime.ai, you know, it tells you, hey, use this NuGet package, uh, microsoft.ml.onyxruntime. Any questions so far about Onyx? I'll be clear. I'll give you more examples later on. Of, you know, how, how do we use this Onyx runtime? All right, let's go back to Windows, the Windows key. Uh, Windows P, if you're presenting like me, this might be useful. If you just want to uh, you know, use the projection settings, uh, Windows zoom in and zoom out. If you just want to zoom in, zoom out, the Windows Plus and Windows Minus, that can be very useful. And of course, Windows Escape, you can, it closes that window. Sometimes a little bit of here and there helps out. All right. So I did talk a little bit about ML.NET. Uh, ML.NET is machine learning for .NET application. Uh, it can be used online or offline, meaning you, you can have the model running here or in the cloud. Um, or you know, running locally, that means you don't need to be connected to the internet or in the cloud. It can also ML.NET, I did show you uh, a little bit about AutoML to generate some machine learning model. It, you know, model, what it is, is to, it helps us transform input data into something into, that is in, you know, to predict something. Uh, it, it can import TensorFlow models, some Onyx models. It's, it's cross-platform, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, and the like. ML.NET has model builder. As us for developers, if you want to create a model, um, it is ML.NET model builder is a Visual Studio tool that can build and train and ship machine learning models. You can also train it in Azure, but it's step-by-step -step, uh, wizard type of uh, in instructions. And I'll show you some example. And it, the goal here is to generate custom machine learning model. The ones I did demo a while ago is using a model that's pre-existing. This one is if we want to create our own model based from our data, uh, based from our data set. So typically, uh, this is, you know, there's, this is the pattern, right? You import your data, then you train the model and start evaluating it and how good it is, and then it generates the code for you. All right, so let's, let's do a quick demo on that. Before that, any questions so far? Good. So anyone can answer, why do we want the custom model? Why do we want to build a custom model? Yeah, the algorithm is not existing. Yeah, because yeah, it's for our data, not anyone's data, not everyone's training data. OK. So yes, sir? What if you don't have any data yet? That's the critical part. Let's, let's start collecting data first and, and sample data, and then we can do create the model. Right, that's the critical part of any machine learning model, is finding the right data, finding clean data. Because it could be messy, and most of the data scientists, but that's what they do, is they sweep the floor, <laughs> they, sweep, they, 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 they clean up the data <laughs> to make sure that it's something that is useful so that we can build the right model. Right? So, so in order to use um, um, ML, in order to use this ML.NET model builder, uh, anyone familiar with extensions in Visual Studio? I've used extensions in Visual Studio. There is an extension 
uh, for this and in order to enable it. It's called ML.NET Model Builder. So you just have to search it here and it will show up and then you can install it. There's ML.NET mo Model Builder and an ML.NET Model Builder with GPU support. Uh, so if you just want to experiment, let's start with the Model Builder itself, 2022. Um, if you have a good GPU on your machine, it makes the training faster. And there's a configuration set up that you, you need to do in order, in order to accomplish that. But to start with, you can, you can do this. All right, so what that one does, it actually creates, when you, cr when you create a new project, um, let's see if this shows up here, machine learning. It kind of gives you a kind of like a cookie cutter type. Um, but when you create a, like let's say a console application, if you right click add on a console application, you will have this capability where it says machine learning model. Okay. And what this one does, it kind of gives you the, the template. You specify the machine learning model. And it creates this mlmodel.mb config. In this case, I already built it here. And what it will do is it will walk you through different scenarios of what you're trying to accomplish. For this demo, I want to focus on image classification since I started there. But you can do data classification, value prediction. That's the one I was just talking about, the taxi fare. That is a value prediction. You're trying to predict the value. You can also create recommendation systems, object detection, forecasting. You can also do anomaly detection and clustering on this, but we're gonna focus on the image classification today. This is something visual, okay? If you wanna train it locally on your machine, to start with, you know, it might make sense to train it locally. But I, what I did here is because I have a GPU and I, I did set it up to where, because I wanted to kind of showcase that, hey, it's not just limited to NVIDIA GPU, because a lot of the data scientists out there, they, they know, you know NVIDIA is, you know, is kind of using a lot of the examples out there whenever you start working with machine learning. Uh, but this one in Visual Studio, it doesn't matter. If you're using Intel GPU, it would start using that. If, it's used, if, if, if you have a NVIDIA GPU, it would start using that. There's a little bit of setup. You have to install CUDA in order to, to do it. But now you can use GPU to, to train it locally on your machine. Yeah, so th this is, yeah, whenever it's running, instead of sending it in the cloud, there's a way you can send it to the cloud also. So if you have Azure Machine Learning, you can send that and send all the images to the cloud. In this case, you know, if you have a good computer, if you're just starting out, let's start with something that is local on our machine. Let's try it out. So data, a good example uh, on this is there's, like in this case, there's, um, since I'm doing image classification, this is the sample uh, images that they have out there. And each one of these images have a subfolder and the subfolder would be the label. So in this case, uh, Daisy and pictures of Daisy, dandelion, pictures of dandelion, roses, pictures of roses. You can also, in, uh, if you're doing other data set, like for example, uh, you know, regression, you're doing value prediction, you can connect this to your SQL database and it would walk you through this. In this case, you know, it's just the data that I have locally on my machine and, just, and I'm doing uh, image classification, that's why there's images there. So after you do you know which data you're gonna use. Next step is training. And this one is using ML.net, the auto ML, in order to do the training for you. And you just click train, it'll take a while. In this case, running on my machine, it took about 167 seconds to find the best model for you. It goes through each one of uh, you know, different uh, machine learning uh, algorithms uh, to, to train a model and it would pick the, you know, 
what's the best out of the amount of time it's allotted. And then after that, you can evaluate. In this case, um, I can try another image, post a different image, and then based from the model that it picked, which is DNN plus ResNet 50, uh, then it would give you the results. And this is the results of, you know, the, a lot of it in machine learning is, a lot of it's guessing. It's trying to identify based from this image the result. And it's saying here, most likely it's tulips and instead of roses, sunflower, dandelion, and daisy. Does that make sense? So now that you have a model, you know, we, we collect the data, we train it, we evaluate it, we think it's good, it's ready to go, and we can consume it. This is the inferencing side of things, right? What's good about the model builder, it kind of gives you a way to say, hey, let me add this to my application. If I want to integrate this model to my application, it gives me step-by-step -step instruction of, okay, now I have it, I can have it in my console app, or maybe I can make it as an API. So what I did here was to say, click add to solution. It created this console app right here on the right side. And let's see if I can, and this is what it generate. If you can see that one. Whoop. Sorry. Maybe it's a little bit too big. Oh, anyway. So it added this MB config file and a bunch of files. Remember, it, I did talk about Onyx. It generated an Onyx model so that uh, it it copied it to this console application as part of the project. It kind of gives you how to consume it and, and all the libraries in order to, to, to run. But this is the sample uh, application. What you need to pass is an image, identify which image, convert it to a bitmap, and the model that it needs, you pass it as image source, and then you just say model one that predict pass in your sample data, and it'll give you the result. So let's try to run that, let's see if I can build it. So go through, load the image, add it to this model input, this image source called predict, and then give, gives a result. Of course, it's so fast. There you go. So it gives you daisy, and then this, the percentage. Uh, most likely, it's daisy. It's kind of clear what I'm talking. What happened, right? What we did using ML.NET Model Builder, we created a um, image classification inside Visual Studio, we pass in some images and we trained a new model. And once we trained a new model, we evaluate that model based on that. Then we, you know, we export it or we added it to a console app and then we tested it and it worked. Yes, sir? Does that Onyx work with uh, iOS like Core ML? Or? Yes, there is a way you can also do that uh, in a React app. Uh, in, integrated to, to iOS. There's also a converter to, from Onyx to uh, Core ML. So if you, want, you can make it as a stepping point so that you can integrate it to your, your application. So that's, that's what happened. Okay. Great questions. So there's limitations on what you can do with uh, but I would suggest if, you're going, if you want to try data classification, value prediction, image classification, recommendation, try it locally in your machine first and see what it does. Connect it with your database, connect it with your uh, data set, and then you know, get the results, experiment, try it out. The, the, the important thing for me and what I'm trying to showcase here is that during your spare time, let's try this out, let's see how you know, maybe you can start with this, even though you don't have data scientists yet in your team, 
let's try with, with the existing database or existing data that you have. If there's a good use case, introduce it with the team. And then maybe when it becomes more complicated, you have an existing model, the data scientist can come in and improve that model and get it better for you. Does, does that make sense? So a software engineer, maybe you know, it's, it's not yet, you know, you know, the, the company's kind of thinking about how to add machine learning in your, in your application. Let's start experimenting with this, especially if you have a desktop application. It does not do, well, videos are slices of images, if you think about it, right? So you have to create a program that would look at each one of the frames to do the video, right? And then maybe that's much more complex than what, what this can do. You can do object detection on an image, and you can do that on a loop and reading each one of the frames of that video. There's limitations. Um, if your data set is about 10 megabytes, most likely you can run it locally in your machine. It's about 100 megabytes, about 10 minutes. If you're talking about one gigabyte of images and pictures, yeah, it'll take you more than three hours to, to run. So those are the things you kind of think about. Let's, look, you know, let's start with your data set. Let's try to, to try that out. Oh. Right. So there's, there's some limitations. Of course, it depends on the machine because <laughs> you're running it locally. All right, let's go back to Windows key. Uh, Windows Control F4, uh, actually that happened to me before. Anyone familiar with this uh, window right here where you can have multiple desktop? And so if you, if you can have multiple desktop, you can switch from one desktop to the other. And yeah, you can close the active desktop and move from one to the other. So you can create um, a new virtual desktop, one of those. So Windows AI, Windows AI runs on top of Onyx runtime that runs on top of DirectML and DirectX, the uh, DirectML API that allows you to have you know, GPU, VPU, or XPU in a way, you know, I don't know if you saw the new chips that are coming out, they have this neural network or something, or neural chip, those kind of, and, and of course, you know, you can actually build stuff for that chip. But the, I, the, I, the advantage of using Windows AI, it, it abstract a lot of that for you, especially if you're creating a Windows desktop application. So it's machine learning inferencing on Windows. So it makes it easy for development, uh, abstract the model, that codes a specific way. Uh, broad hardware support, that means you know, different GPUs you know, can be abstracted for you. This is specifically for the inferencing side, not necessarily the training side of things. So hardware uh, optimizations and um, so it's machine learning on Windows app using Windows ML. So it's all about performance, real-time flexibility, Reduces operational cost. The reason why it said that reduces uh, operational cost is because the model that you generated integrates into your application rather than sending, like for example, images to the cloud to do uh, inferencing and then returns back the result. It, this is running as part of your application, right? Running it locally as part of the application and uses the existing hardware in your machine, on that machine. So let's do a little bit of demo, what this one looks like. Feel free to ask questions, because I know machine learning, a lot of things are new. Uh, I'm just giving you like different ideas on what you can start incorporating, especially if you have a machine learning application, or if you, if you haven't done any machine learning in, before. So remember I did talk about ML, uh, auto ML. You can actually have a C sharp application that can do the training for you. So there's a NuGet packages that you might want to incorporate to your application if you're going to do the training, which is the Microsoft ML, that's, uh, that's ml.net, microsoft.ml.automl, and then this Onyx converter to convert it to, to Onyx, and then Onyx runtime to use it uh, into your application. 
So I'm going to run this. We don't have a lot of, a lot of time. I want to make sure uh, I can demo it for you. So what this one would do, uh, this console application, is it would read a C CSV file that has all my data. And this is AutoML running in the background. And what it's doing is it's trying out this different trainer. Remember I did talk about different training algorithms, right? Trying all these different uh, algorithms to train a model once it figures out, hey, maybe we can, you know, this is the best training or model that we can use, then I convert it to an Onyx file and then I can start integrating it to my Windows machine learning application. So my goal here is to, to be able to cr create a model. So what does that model needs? How do I know what that model, for example, uh, I, I have this model that got generated from this data set, right? So this is my training data, and this is my sample data, right? Uh, this is my training data and then, and then my, my sample data. And then once it generates it, um, how do I know uh, what model uh, did it did generate, okay? So if I go to the binary uh, folder here, because I did run this application, it generated this taxifareprediction.onyx, and there's a way to can visualize uh, an onyx model is using this Netron application. And this Netron application uh, kind of finds a way to visualize it, but my visualizer does not look good. Now, for some reason, it's, it's not uh, displaying it correctly. But the important part here is I can click on this, and it tells me what is the input and the output of that model. So the, I know in this case, my input is passenger count, trip time, trip distance, and then fare amount. And then my output is one of these. And if I want to know which one should I use, it, this one kind of gives me the input and output of that model, and then I can integrate it to my application, my Windows application. So how I integrated that, I have this UWP file. Um, and what this one is doing is that um, there are I have to pass in um, uh, an input that I have to convert it into uh, passenger count, trip time, trip distance, and then pass in this input. So there's three steps involved in order to do this. Input, then you have your model file that you want to do evaluation, and then it will give you the score. So let me, let me try to run this real quick, just to kind of visualize it for you and what it's trying to do. Okay. So the input I need to create that this is this is just the, I'm trying to find you a simplest example out there that has the input you pass into this evaluate async to get the output to, to get the prediction, right? So passenger count, trip time, uh, and fair amount. You load the model from uh, the, the application. In this case, it's an Onyx model. And then you create a session, and that session would be used to pass in the input and then get the score. And once you have the score, then you can place the content out there. And then that, that would be my output based from these few things. OK, what just happened? Right? So what I did on this project, I used AutoML 
to create a custom application based from this two CSV file as my data set, convert it to an Onyx model, and use that Onyx model into my universal Windows app. I added a, uh, this Onyx model here, and then use it into my application uh, on, this, on this one. Right, the, that's the score. That's the that's the fair, because it's trying to guess based from that. Uh, it's regression, right? Based from that input, it's based from this uh, trip time, based from this input. It would try to predict what that output is. Right. So how? Because this model requires you to pass that in, even though it's not being used. I don't know why, but that's the reason why I wanted to showcase this. Well, you know, why does it require that? But for some reason, this model requires it, and you pass that in. Can you zoom in about three times there? This one? Yeah. Oh, maybe it's, yeah, for some reason, it's not showing. I don't know why properly. Anyway, it might be the, that tool, but typically, you can, you can do that, too. See if it will open up. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's what it looks like. This is regression. And machine learning is, at the end of the day, it's passing through this input, do its guessing. Sorry. Oh, for some reason, it closed it. Maybe it's crashed or something. OK. Never mind. Maybe it's installing a, an updated version. OK. All right. So in summary, what is machine learning? Two things you have to remember. Training and inferencing, right? Creating a model and then using that model. Open Neural Network Exchange, uh, it's a model file like PDF. Onyx Runtime is a way for you to use Onyx model into integrate it with your application. Community Toolkit is just an easier way, a NuGet package to add compu computer vision models to Windows app. ML.NET Model Builder walks through step by step to generate a custom model inside Visual Studio. Windows Machine Learning is implementing uh, machine learning into your Windows application. <laughs> For, okay, let's go back to the Windows key. Windows dot is if you're typing in an email, if you want to put an emoji into your email uh, or Outlook, Windows dot. It opens up the emoji. Windows Shift S, this is very useful, and I use this a lot. If you just want to capture something on the screen, you can use Windows Shift S and then drag, and it will, it will capture it, put it in the, um, and it, it will create a model, uh, it will create a captured screen, put them in clipboard, and you can paste it in to your app. All right. If you want to, get the information or the, the sample code that I did demo, uh, and also the slides, uh, feel free to, uh, to go there. All right. If you're interested in learning more about me, I'm, a, I'm Ron Dagdag. I'm a lead software engineer at Spacey. I'm a sixth year Microsoft MVP awardee. The best way to contact me is through LinkedIn. If you can connect me through LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, the, the, the reason why I'm doing this is because there are things that, um, that I know as software engineer, it's, it's something that we can give back. And most likely, you may not use it, you know, whatever I talk about today. But one of these days, once you have a project, I want, I want you to, to kind of have that click and say, hey, there's, it's something that is useful that I learned. And giving back to the community is important. And of course, you know, letting me know and connecting through our social networks, letting me know what you learn and when you use it. Because you know, I have some people that I did talk about these things three years ago, and they come back, yeah, whatever you told me, it's a way for us to, you know, that I'm explaining it to our team. The reason why we're attending these conferences, if you think about, we are the expert at our companies, right? We are pretty much the reason why they do this because they want us to expand our horizon, what we can do, and what we can make the company 
uh, uh, successful. And a lot of these little things may be, may be useful right now, but when to use it, when not to use it. And that's the reason why I'm, I'm doing it. And I appreciate you geeking out with me about Windows keys, Windows machine learning, and Windows AI, and hope you got something uh, from our presentation today. Thank you very much. You guys here.